Hey, what's up guys? This is Vlad Cameron from Real Light. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use Light on Pro iRay efficiently, quickly, and how to get the most out of it. So first of all, as you can see, you can create some extraordinary renders using Light on Pro iRay. And I've put a lot of time into designing this to be as quick and easy as possible, and it uses a very different approach than most light sets you're used to. So I'm going to start off by showing you some other types of lights and some of the pitfalls when using those. So I'm going to start off by jump into Dash Studio and also show you a quick note notepad here I've been preparing. So some of the downsides using normal or standard IRA HDRI lighting. So there are no adjustments other than rotation and fold intensity. So let me show you that inside Dash Studio. All right, so in this example, I'm using, let me just go back here, Dimension Theory, Skies of Iridians, which is a set of pre-designed HDRI maps for iRay. By no means is this a bad product. It has a place in time. It's just, it has some negative aspects, which I want to put some light on. And one of them is it's kind of difficult to know what each map will do upon loading. Okay, you can click on these and it just loads a complete new set and the sun comes from a particular angle and there is a sky and so forth. But the thing is, once you add it here, you have very little control over what's going on here. See, you cannot just say, hey, I want to have more sunlight. It's just not possible. You cannot just say, hey, I want to have less of the skylight and more intense sunlight. It's not possible to adjust. So what you do is you adjust pretty much everything. And for instance, you can just go say, hey, I want to have more of everything or I want to have less of everything. That's pretty much what you can do as far as intensity goes, right? Now, you can also obviously rotate the entire dome and you can do that with a dome rotation, right? And then find a cool angle that maybe suits your scene and create something cool. But you don't you just don't know which angle is gonna look great. You have to, you know, each of these maps comes with its own position of the sun. So if you click on another one, the sun location on that particular map might differ, all right? And it might just create a completely different scene uh, and for instance, you can just maybe click on, let's say I want to have um, sunny here. And each of them differ and it's kind of like random, okay? You have to randomly just check, okay, this one looks like this. This has a sun like this and okay, I can maybe rotate this around to a different angle. And what is it? It's here, right? And maybe you will find something that looks decent. Now, the problem here is that you are kind of limited with what you can do, right? And once you then load this entire render into Photoshop, you are further limited by the very fact that you just have a single render. You cannot in Photoshop do um, a lot because everything is kind of fixed. There is this fixed um, proportion of brightness and darkness in the image. You cannot just say, hey, I want to have more of this, more of the sunlight. I want to have more of this, you know, and no. you have very limited uh, adjustments that you can do inside Photoshop. Now, of course, to a certain extent, you can adjust brightness, you can adjust dark levels and brightness and all that. So there are some adjustments, but they're very limited. Now, back to our list, so as I just said, you cannot adjust individual components, all right? You're kind of left with what's designed from, from, from start. Now, it also lacks fillers. So we need to uh, you know, add an additional light to your scene. And what I mean with this is that you know, professional lighting is that you kind of direct the sun so it becomes the strong light source in your render. A little bit of lighting lesson here, right? You kind of want to rotate it so that it becomes a little bit more intense on your character, on the environment, and projects strong lighting from the side or back. And then you want to kind of match that or 
accent from the front with a so-called fill like like filler and it's missing right here right it's not available so you gotta go in here and add a spotlight and really adjust it and aim it and you know make it fit and so it's a lot of work right so and still you end up having this single render right so you're still within the same limitations now let's go back to our list so let's move on to the next uh, way of lighting this is just what I said once you reach Photoshop you only have one image to adjust right now the downsides of using the built-in Ari global lighting this is another way of lighting so on the way this works you go back to that studio and you just remove this over here right you remove the environmental map designed by the artist and that when you close that you engage the built-in array global illumination for outdoor renders and also indoor renders with big windows and what this is it's this kind of weird funky thing with the latitude longitude day time offset and whatnot all these options right and it can be a little bit confusing and still so you've got the scene and you're thinking okay um, i want the sun a little bit lower so um and to lower the sun you have to enter a new time which will lower the sun but also rotate it because as the sun sets in reality in the real world it also orbits around the the earth or, or vice versa the, uh, the earth orbits the sun right but we we kind of feel that the sun is moving although we are moving along anyway so you kind of you can lower the sun but as you do that you also rotate it so it's kind of like eh, okay so i have to counter now the rotation occurring so i had to go back and uh, what is it again i'm searching all these options it's a gazillion options right let me write this down what were you experiencing here lots of confusing adjustments right difficult to get the desired effect and position of the sunlight because it is you're seeing it on the go here on the fly so now say i have the right elevation now i want to rotate it so that it fits my scene let me see if that can be something whoops wrong rotation uh let's try the other angle whoops now it's outside and you know it's kind of confusing and you don't really have much control it's kind of trial and error until you get it right now when you get it right you're still rendering a single layer right single image so it's the very same thing you spend time adjusting in dash studio and waiting for the preview okay because each time uh you're adjusting here um now i have a very fast machine all right i have a gtx 1080 so i have a really fast machine but if you don't you have to wait for this preview each and every time until it shows and well if it's good you can let it render right so that is that now again it lacks fillers so you still need to add additional light so again the way professional lighting works you're gonna place the strong sunlight in this case the sunlight right from the back or from the side now you do that okay you have to do that so it's kind of confusing again you have to now find lots of stuff to to um scroll through here got to raise the sun a little bit uh possibly all right maybe good elevation now we got to rotate it let's find rotation here somewhere uh there it is so uh can it be 180 uh maybe um, something like that okay pretty cool and now you render this and you still don't have this frontal soft softening effect so you still got to go here you got to add a spotlight you got to raise it off the ground you got to back it off you got to aim it adjust it and all that stuff so it's still a lot of tweaking to do and it's again a little bit confusing and you don't have real control because as you move the sun down okay as you enter the new time let's say i want to lower i want longer shadows in my render and now the sun is whoops it's way gone and i don't know where to find it now i have to adjust it again the rotation just to bring it back and hope that it's gonna whoops that's the wrong way 
you see it's not that easy to just get the sun exactly what I wanted right so I designed light on pro to cover all those issues and give you some amazing benefits so here they are so when I designed light on pro I wanted to lift off all that confusion all these weird adjustments you have to do and I made it very easy to be inside jazz studio so once you're ready to light your scene there's no intensity no other tedious adjustments inside jazz studio just one sun position that's pretty much the only adjustment you do there are if you want to have more advanced effects a little bit more tweaking if you want to but in most cases sun position is the only thing you really need to consider doing there is no color adjustments there is no you know weird uh, angles or stuff you just place the sun and I'm going to show you how easy it is so you really spend minimal time inside jazz studio by adjusting the sun position using simple and powerful icons so let me show you that all right so let's load light on pro to our scene and once when once it's installed you're going to find in dash studio formats my das library light presets dream light iray and light on pro iray now when you click here you have additional menus here i'm going to cover those in a moment but right here you got load and main render preset once this is applied you simply switch over to the light on pro camera and if you have a different cam prior to to loading light on pro you want to copy that camera's position and paste it onto this current camera here so in this case let me just I've got two actually loaded into my scene. Um, you simply, if you have a different camera that you have set up prior to loading, you just copy that, Control C, and then go in here, Control V to paste it, and it will just replace that camera. Now, upon loading, immediately you can go to NVIDIA Hour Preview. And right now, Lightroom Pro is in kind of design mode, if you will. And as I mentioned earlier, you're going to render using specific layers, which are located here. you got sun, sky, filler, and all that. I'm going to cover those in a moment. But right now, what you want to do is adjust the lights. And really, the one thing you want to do is the, sky, the, the sun, right? And the thing that differs here is that you've got... Remember the issue we were having? The sun orbits around the scene as you select a new height or... or time of the day here you have high mid low and very low sun height all right and each one of them has 24 presets which are simply put rotation angles around your scene and these are exactly the same regardless of what height you choose which means for instance in this case let's say we want to have the sun straight from behind so you can see now, immediately it makes sense. I chose an angle where the shadow at the bottom here reflects that the sun is coming from behind straight towards my model, right? If I want to angle it, I can just click here and it immediately reflects and shows you that it's happening. And it just makes sense, 45 degrees on this end, right? And if you want to have 45 degrees on the other end, you just choose that and you have it immediately. And so there is no guesswork here. You just choose the angle and it's there. As long as the camera is pointing upwards in your scene, right? Now, let's say you want to have a lower sunlight. Well, go to mid. And you can see just you can keep the same angle. Just click on it. And it will just be lower sunlight. It's that easy. It's the same angle. Shadows continue to go straight towards the camera as, a, as in this icon. And you can also change now and you know, change rotation to reflect reflect what you want to see in your scene and it just makes sense there's no guesswork here these are designed to point exactly the way you point them so let's say you want to have the sun pretty much straight forward well click straight forward and it's straight forward no guesswork you want to have a lower straight forward well click on low and choose straight forward and it is lower straight forward so there is no guessing here no confusion no confusing right and you don't have a gazillion options to choose from it's just that easy you even have very low like kind of almost like sunset 
Um, so it's that easy, guys. Now, let me just reset this back. So you have a reset button in case you just mess things up. Just click there and it's completely back to where you started. Now, as I said, Lightroom Pro iRay differs. It doesn't, I, I don't want you to render this image as is. I want you to render in layers for all the benefits inside Photoshop, like live adjustments and all that. And really incredible control because I'm going to show you right now. So let's go ahead and render a few layers, all right? I mean, you can just go into uh, render layers and choose to render the sun. The sun is adjusted, you just hit render, okay? When this render is done, you hit sky, render, it's done. When you want to add this filler from the camera so that it fills out extra lighting from the front, you hit filler and you render that layer and it's done. No adjustments necessary. Now it has a filler parented to it. So it's already pre-calibrated for any scene whatsoever, both indoors and outdoors. But for now, don't worry about it. just hit render and you're done. So this is another layer. Now, if you have some additional lights, like your own spotlight, if you wanna have that, you can create a custom layer, that's okay. Now, say you wanna render the, the mask of the sky because you wanna adjust the sky individually. Maybe you wanna replace the sky, add some clouds or whatever, you can do that. So go ahead and click on the mask and it says filter must be off, so go ahead Turn off the filler, ready. Now what happens when you render this now, it goes very quickly, is that you end up having a mask of your sky. And masks can be created for different you know, uh, objects. Uh, some masks can be um, of the sky, as you can see as of now, they render just in a, in a few seconds. You can also render a mask for your character. Uh, for instance, the Charlene character I have in my scene. So what I can do, I can remove the entire set, just remove it and hit render. That would just create another layer, another mask, so to speak. In this case, a mask of Charlene. All right, again, renders in seconds. Now I can go back and say, hey, I wanna have a mask of Charlene and the bridge she's standing on. Maybe you want to add some kind of cool fog effect behind. So you simply click on the bridge, all right? And the bridge has here is a prop within the prop, so to speak. So I'm going to just unparent it from the scene. Then I'm going to remove all the props. Right click, remove, and hit render. Again, see how quick that is? It's very straightforward, it's very logically uh, created so that everything just flows naturally. You create one render after another, follow a certain path, and you're gonna create these um, layers very, very quickly. Now, this creates a mask of the bridge and Charlene so that we can add um, the uh, fog effect. I'm gonna show you that. The fog effect, you're gonna get that uh, within the package. It's very, very easy to do inside Photoshop. And usually it takes a while for, for Ari to initiate, but then once it starts rendering, it just goes really quickly. So now we have a mask of that. Very quickly, go back. Now, let's say, hey, I want to have some of those cool rim lighting effects. It's like you kind of have, let me first undo the deletion of the scene. It's like you have those cool, um, if you take a look at this package, when I created this, this scene, I had this, awesome rim light effect going around her here on both sides, right? It kind of makes her stand out of the background so that she kind of pops and doesn't blend within the image. So this is a rim light effect and you can easily create it by simply hitting rim light. You click on it, go to preview and take a look at how it looks like. Now, this is the rim light preview, and normally when you do rim light effects, you don't want to have the props included. You just add them on your character. You can add them to the entire scene or other elements, but usually you just add them to one character or a group of characters to make them, to isolate them from the background, right? So you remove all the, all the other stuff from the scene and you simply work now with this particular layer. 
So, and in any case you feel it's a little bit too dark, well, go to render intensity and just adjust accordingly. Normally it's at 100 and maybe you want to do 200 on this one, so it's a little bit more intense or 300 or whatever, 400, right? So just feel it punches the scene. But don't worry so much about intensity because really you do that inside Photoshop, right? So your kind of goal is here to make them look decent and have enough light to work with. Don't make them too dark, but usually they can just pre-calibrate to, pre to work off the bat, okay? So now, and as you click on these icons, you quickly see how easy it is to rotate along her. And you know exactly where the light is going to be because that's how it is designed, okay? It's designed to come from the side. Now, say you want to have a little bit lower. So, we click on mid and you get the exact same angles. Zero confusion. Uh, because you just click where the light should come from and it does that. As you lower it, now let's lower it very low and say, hey, I want the same angles. Where you get the same angles. Now, as you can see, this rim light is a little bit special, right? It doesn't really have any bounce light. It's very, it just hits your character and then dies off. And it's designed to do that. And when you're done setting this, you can either render one rim light or two rim lights, maybe one from the left, one from the light, right? Or you can set one that's a little bit wider. Maybe you can go into adjust sun and say, hey, I want to have a little bit more ground so it's a little bit wider it's the more wider is the the bigger it is so the more intense it is so as you increase that width or or softness it says affects intensity so you might maybe need to readjust that down a little bit but it's nothing difficult and really when you're done with that all you need to do is adjust the now that we have the more wider you know um wider sun you can go for a single angle and that will now cover the entire character from one side excuse me all right so now you're covering both left and right at the same time but as you can see right now we have the sun engaged and sun bounces off so we're gonna do the rim light effect click on rim light that's how easy it is so I made this very, very straightforward. I made this with this particular flow in mind that you don't really worry about the end result. You just do this straightforward. Sun, sky, filler, mask, rim light. That's it. There is nothing else to it. You don't worry so much about how it looks because you got to trust the process. I've been doing this for a very, very long time. So I know how the layers should be adjusted, how they should be rendered. And I know that when you blend it, it just looks great. And you go just follow the simple rule, use the strong light from the side or back, and it's always gonna be awesome. So having that said, let's jump into Photoshop, and I'm gonna just show you how easy and quick and how much fun you can have inside Photoshop, all right? And so just prior to go into Photoshop, it goes without saying, but I still wanna mention it, that after each layer is completed, you want to save the render. And in most cases, when you're doing the full layers like filler, sky, or sun, or rim light, you want to save them as BMP. So in here at the very bottom, you would choose BMP format and just choose your file name. Now, if you're saving masks like of the sky or of your objects, those you want to save as PNG files instead. As you can see here, the mask I've been saving in, in PNG format, right? Those will preserve the transparency. And that's basically it. So let's move on to Photoshop. All right, so while loading Photoshop, just a quick recap, you render pre-adjusted layers directly with no or minimal adjustments. As you saw, I'm not just talking, I'm showing you that this is this is how this is designed. So you can render full layers, which are, for instance, the sky, sun, filter, or rim light, which I just show you. And also control layers, such as the mask, which I also show you for how it's done, right? And all these are for you now the masks are for isolating your sky or any objects for ma maximum control inside Photoshop. Now, 
which I'm just about to show you, you're going to experience full creativity with live adjustments inside of Photoshop. And this is how I designed this to be. I want you to spend time inside of Photoshop. Uh, by the way, you can also um, load this in the GIMP. It works in the GIMP as well. Uh, now, you can control the entire image since you can readjust any individual component. So there is no need to re-render and wait, re-render and wait. Uh, you just simply, you don't wait for the preview. You just render the layers all the way there as they are designed. You just follow, follow the simple procedure I, I've just showed you. And it's going to be awesome each and every time. So this is exactly how I design all the promo images you've been watching at, right? Now, the Venice scene has all in all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven layers. And in most cases, you don't need to have that many. Uh, I just wanted to provide some additional things, uh, which I want to cover in depth in upcoming videos. So I'm not going to cover everything in this particular video, uh, but there are you know things you can do to add, add additional control, like render a filler only on the lady, as you can see here, right? I didn't cover that in in the previous video. Uh, I also render a mask of the girl only here, and some additional masks. And most of this you don't need. This is just a kind of if you want to go really nuts and have really fun in Photoshop, you can do that, right? And it kind of invokes that kind of behavior. That's why, hey, what kind of additional layer can I do here just to have a little bit more fun inside Photoshop? And what I wanna do is show you how to combine the main full layers. So you don't start by adding these layers. These are control layers, right? The black and ones, black and white ones are control layers. We don't add those. So what we wanna do is simply Hold, uh, sorry, hold control on the PC, and it's going to be Command on the Mac, and simply left click. Sorry, yeah, hold down control, left click on all the layers you want to add and combine. So we're going to add all the rim lights. At this point, I don't know which is which is going to be the the best one, so I'm just adding this. Right, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven main layers. Masks are not main layers, they are control layers. So I'm adding them, loading them straight in. All right, when it's loaded, I go straight down and locate the Dreamlight Light on Pro um, image combiner. And also we can have a glow effect, I'm gonna show that in a moment. But really, since we have seven layers, I wanna choose combine seven layers. Hit play and bam, it's done. So now all the layers are added. So I, what I can do now is close the individual windows. I kept them open just in case you want to go back and maybe re-add or redo something. So I'm just simply going to close them here. And this is how the render looks as of now. It's everything full force. And that's not what this is all about. It's really about adjusting this and having fun along the way. So, for instance, the bottom layer is the filler, the front filler that kind of engages the entire scene, right? We can also double click here and just call it filler. And the beautiful thing is now we can just adjust it on the fly without any way to just adjust it here and say, okay, I want a little bit of that. That looks pretty good. Let's work with that, okay? So here you have frontal filler on the lady only, okay? So we can call it filler girl all right and we can just scale it and say hey I want to add a little bit of frontal lighting but maybe not too much okay now these are the rim lighting effects okay and those I'm gonna just leave them as they are right now because it's one thing I've learned is that the more lights you add to your scene the more you might need to tone down or increase certain other layers so just go with the flow and here is the sky so Skylight is the main kind of like sky. This is the blue tone you see in the image. Well, it looks pretty good the way it is right now. You can tone it down and also keep the sky here more dominant. There is a, there is a way of doing that. I'm going to show you that in a moment. 
but we'll just keep it as um, for at max for now. And here we have the sun. And usually the sun can be you know either removed or be really intense, intensify in your scene. So what I want to do is I want to click on duplicate layer. Looks pretty good. I'm going to intensify it some more. So I'm going to click on duplicate again. And it's that easy to control all the layers. So see, it's no, it's kind of magical the way it grows, but it's very straightforward, it's very fun, and it's instant. All right, so this is how easy and fast it is to combine the layers. It goes straight forward. Now, I'm going to show you a few very cool things you can only do when you have layers. So this is kind of like the hidden benefits that so few people know about because the, all the render is the is the complete image and the complete image has very little control of the details so i'm going to show you why right now so here is our image as of now and here is the thing on her skirt there is a little bit of sharp shadowing going on and that comes from the sun layer only okay that's the only layer that creates this effect now, if we isolate this layer, just take a look at it, we see that it comes really down to this area over here. And what's so beautiful about layers is that you can now, because it's, it's only, the only layer we are playing with is the sunlight, okay? So what we can do is really pick a black brush. Let's go to that layer. And let's choose a size and pretty soft and opacity 50, okay? And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom in on the skirt, all right? And simply paint it away. So I'm painting away that shadowy effect that didn't work out on the skirt. Now, what happens here, I can do the same thing on the other layers or just copy them, you know, and same thing on this top layer over here. And I'm just fine tuning the first one over here. All right. So all that weird shadowy effect is now gone. And we are left with a clean skirt on her. That is pretty darn very difficult to do when you have all the other stuff happening at the same time in your render, when you just have a single layer. That's the beauty of working with layers. You can just say, hey, okay, I see the skylight affects my render like this. This is what the skylight does, okay? It affects my render and hits this building over on the right side but I want to tone it down really on the right side. Let's just pretend we want to do that. So we add a mask to it. We switch over to gradient, use black and white, and simply fade away the sky down here in the lower right corner. What this now does, it takes away the sky component on the right side of the image. Maybe there is a particular prop there we want to tone down or a specific area we don't want to expose as much so see you have individual control per layer and what this means is that you can do your adjustments in a much cleaner way because it's only affecting this particular layer this the sky it's not affecting the sun which means there was still data in here that you can work with there's still data here you can work with right so we can also remove this if it's not needed, delete. Now, let me show you how we can control the sky. Now, let's, let's load the, um, the uh, control masks, okay? These are, I didn't add from the start. So here they are. One of them is this one, okay? We have this, uh, the, the bridge and the girl. We also have the mask of the city, of the sky. And we have the girl isolated here if you want to. So these are additional kind of control masks, if you will. And upon loading, it's as easy as just say, hey, you want to flatten the image. Uh, let's copy that, control A, select all, control C, go back, go in here. Now I'm going to do a cool thing. I'm going to copy and duplicate the sky layer. And on the copy, I'm going to create a mask, alt click on it, and now control V to paste that mask. What I've done now, is right now I have an individual layer 
I can now click on the main layer here on this side, not the mask here, but on the main layer. And now I can adjust it down and see it only affects the sky proportion of the render. It's the sky only, nothing else. So I can take this, I can also inverse the mask, okay? We can take it here, create a mask on this one, alt click, paste, invert it, adjustments, invert, um, click here. So now this one, um, they, they, they collide right now because they share the same space. So this is not ideal to do, but you can now tone down and say, hey, I want to I have a little bit less sky presence in the scene, but yet I want the sky to be full. This would also work without the mask. They, they are sharing the same space. If, if you have a positive and negative mask, they're going to counter each other, but it's possible. Now, as you can see now, this layer controls how the buildings look like. I want to have less of that. Okay, I want more contrast in my image, but still want to have full impact on the sky. So this is how powerful this is. Now, let's say we want to add a cool um, kind of foggy effect right behind the bridge and Charlene, okay? So for that, I've created a, a mask of which we have over here, right? The bridge and the lady. So I'm going to just flatten the image so it just looks like this. Control A, Control C, go back. And this is best done once you're kind of done with the main composition, which we are right now. At that stage, you want to flatten the entire image and you have the final image ready right in front of you. Now you make a copy. All right, on the copy, we're gonna create, I'm gonna, you're gonna have this very image in your arsenal. So it's, it's in the folder you can load. I just haven't packed it yet, but really you're gonna get an image which I used for the fog uh, as you're building it. So right now you can see I have a fog layer here and it's placed behind her and the bridge, okay? so. I'm going to copy that fog layer and just show you how it looks because upon loading it, it looks like this. This is what you're normally facing when you are adding a, you know, um, a fog layer like this. And you want to blend it, you know, using screen. But then again, it's in front of your character. Okay, right now it's in front of, we want to place this behind. So what we're going to do is simply put, add that mask of the bridge and the lady, go back, create the mask here, alt click on it, control V to paste it, and then go back. So now we have placed the mask on that layer. So we are filtering her from the cloud, from the fog. Now, if you disable this one, the lock here, you can now move the cloud, just hold control, or command on your on your Mac and now this fog layer is entirely behind you can move it stretch it rotate it whatever you want to and place it where it just makes sense does it make sense right so at this stage there is a little bit more stuff you can do you can for instance if you're ready with this mix with this additional fog effect you can finalize it, flatten the image, and go and add the glow effect. Just hit on play, and it's added. So the fog effect has three layers. One is the kind of very bright, very um, large, glowy effect that kind of bleeds onto the buildings. Then you have a little bit smaller one. And then you have the very kind of more narrow here at the bottom, you can just adjust them. And thing is why I did this is I found the built-in glow effect, instead also called bloom, very 
weird inside eye ring. I have to tell you, it's it's like it kind of destroys the image, makes it fuzzy at times, blurry. It's difficult to set. You don't know how it works. So I found it's a lot easier and better to just add it over here, right? Now, at this stage, when you're done with adjusting of the glow, what all you do is click flatten image, and you add one more thing, which is the built-in camera raw filter. And pretty much all you're gonna do now, let me just squeeze this into the view real quick. So all we want to do is just add a little bit more color, warm a tint. You can play with exposure if you wanna. Just adjust it a little bit more if you wanna have more punch in the image. And I usually just add a little bit of clarity, not too much, just a little bit. And then I click here on lens corrections and I add a vignetting. And that is the image. That's pretty much what I did when I created this image. Now, the shocking thing about this, we've been playing here a little bit with layers, having fun inside Photoshop. We haven't been doing any super advanced stuff. It's just because the, the, the magic is in the layers, how they are carefully calibrated to work together. And how it just, everything just fits, right? It's no guessing, you just follow the simple rule sun from the side or behind make it look cool the rest is going to fall into place now if you just look at the scene back inside dash studio and we're going to do a preview of how this really looks with the sky and sun like it normally would do so this is how a render looks like straight from dash studio and Remember, this is a single layer. You don't have the same control. It's very more, it's much more difficult to control um, uh, things happening in your render because everything is combined. And here is how the render looks like in Photoshop. It's how much fun, how much we have added. And remember, you have, you decide just how intense things are. If you don't like the way I'm you know, mixing and matching this uh, so that it looks very, um, very intense and polished, then by all means, you use a different uh, approach, right? And same in the pull render, pull render, I, uh, I played with similar, you know, layers. I had fillers, rim lights, sun, sky, and that's pretty much it, a, a few masks. And the thing is, it's the same process. It's the same process. You just make sure this, this the hard light is coming from the side or behind. The rest is automatic or semi-automatic, and it just you know creates these cool renders automatically. So that's pretty much what I want to cover in this video, guys. So go ahead and grab Light Tone Pro for iRay, and in the no package i also include additional videos that really go much more into depth of creating effects and adjusting layers more advanced technology uh, and tactics and strategies for really bringing out your renders to life and also how to control you know errors render errors hide them and all that so it's all included in the extra videos this was just a quick intro to how this looks like and how it operates inside Dash Studio and Photoshop. And like I said, you can use this in GIMP. For GIMP, I don't have the automatic actions, but it's pretty straightforward how to use, how to add these manually. And I also have a video on how to use this in the GIMP, in the full package. So you get, you see all that, how it's all um, there and how it you know, works, um, regardless if using Photoshop or the GIMP. So guys, that was it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Go grab this now and I'll see you next time.